Okay, so here we go for our lecture for Design 330. It's the 16th, and we're working on final detail drawings. So we have a design now. Thank you for all of you who worked through the design review. We'll go through the final design now. And that's what we're going to do our final design drawings on. What are we to do this week? Uh, which started yesterday, but yesterday was a holiday, so hopefully you all took the holiday off. Um, so we're working on our final detail drawings. This is week number five of this semester. I've made a preview video that you can watch, and here is the playlist for you to go through if you have any uh, problem finding any of the videos for the for the week they're all in the playlist for the week um here's uh, and and let's just show those so there's the there's the preview and here's the playlist and this is what's in there so far there's quite a bit you've got some good viewing to do to go through before you get too much into the um into the details Here's a folder that has a lot of stuff for you. It's got um, drawings that will help you understand what your design part needs to look like in the end. And these are close. They're not perfect. Uh, we'll go over that a little bit. And here are your base designs for each of those that you can use. You do not need the check assembly. It's just in there for your use. You do need the filter, the block housing, the piston and it looks like I'm missing one looks like I'm I'm missing the uh, base design for the nipple so I'll get that in there for you and um, so you're gonna you're gonna be making those drawings but here's another thing you're going to do some machining and each of you is an is assigned a specific X direction to hit and a Y direction. And I just want to see how close you can come. It's not easy, to tell you the truth, because it doesn't, it's not quite as easy as you would think to get it exactly right, but you'll get pretty close. And I want to know how long it took you to do it. Okay, so you've each got a set of dimensions that you're going to try to hit. And uh, here's the simulator itself, as you're, as you're familiar with. And notice we've got a, a rotation on here now that you don't have to, you don't have to do. Okay, so you can leave that alone for right now. Um, but the rest of it all looks the same as what you're used to seeing right now. Okay, and you can submit your work now. Many people have been missing. Uh, a key part of this, you've been um, either missing this statement to put in or you're not filling it out quite correctly. So I've got a little video to show you how to do that. Here's a little video. I'd like to like have you watch it. So that's our quick preview that took just a few minutes. Again, we're working on final drawings. Let's see what we're going to go over today. Today, we're going to go over the uh, design review results. That was important. The design review was there so that we could finalize our design. And as the chief engineer, I've taken the input that was given. And uh, it was very good, by the way. Everybody had good input. If you had some specific input and you're interested to know why I didn't include it. If I did not include it, you can always check with me and find out. Okay, sometimes there's good input and, and I just decide not to do it. <laughs> that, that happened a couple of times. But so we're going to go over the design review notes. We're going to look at the base design files. Um, and then we're going we're gonna to look at some, some items. Okay, so here's these that we can look at so that you can see what they're going. Oh, I know why I didn't have the base design in here for the nipples, because we're not going to do that until Thursday. That's why. 
Okay, and so, so let's go ahead and look at the design review notes. These are basically my finished notes for what the final design is going to look like. So these are the results. You'll notice that the block dimensions have changed. They're a little bit smaller in the height. I think I kept the same width and I extended the block so there's room to clamp on right here. I like those concepts and those ideas from it. And then um, a bunch of people said, well, let's get rid of some of these fittings and just put the piston tube right into the block. And I did so. And then uh, I did so on the inlet side too. Although you'll see that it's now a half inch because uh, I had some input of my own when I tested this. These checks, these little quarter inch checks were too strong. I couldn't pull the water through them. There wasn't enough there wasn't enough draw when I pulled back to actually open that check and pull it through. So I found a new check assembly, a half inch check assembly with a very, very light swing check. It's a different style of check. This is called a poppet check or a ball check. And this one's a swing check. And it's a half inch and it's much easier to pull the water in. So I changed this to a half inch with a half inch nipple. This happens to have half inch female by half inch female NPT. So there's my, my check. And then here I made a half inch little water filter here. And the way I did it is no matter which direction the water's coming at it, it doesn't strike head on to any of the holes. So it's harder for something to impinge and plug the hole. Some probably still could, but it'll be easy to clear, okay? Um, and so you'll notice if the water is coming this way, it's going to kind of go like that and like that. And these holes on the backside will remain open. And this motion will probably push anything past those holes because it's not hitting them straight on. And if it comes this way, the same thing. It'll kind of like go all around. There's not much impact on any of the holes. Okay, so that's that's how I designed this item, and, and I actually built it. It it works. I put it on. I three D printed one yesterday, and it does work. So half inch on the inlet, half inch on the top cross. This stays at a quarter inch, and then the piston. I liked the idea of the air driving down. So there were a few concepts because we talked about it of pulling this whole thing out of the water and letting this just hang down. I don't think there's enough control for that. You won't get this where you necessarily want it to go. Um, and, and if any of you have been fishing, <laughs> you know it's hard to put the it's hard to put the bait exactly where you want it, uh, especially if there's some debris or something that you need to get past or down. So I still consider that I that this should be best underwater. It's also more important because now the operator can stand on the banks and get that thing out there, and it's much safer. Your insurance is less. You're not as cold. You're able to bundle up. It's not as dangerous to be out on the water if uh if you're using the remote operated vehicle so i i made the decision that we would stay with the remote operated vehicle that means this part is going to be underwater but it's easy to put an air tube on it that's pretty easy and so let me see if i can zoom in on this zoom 200 percent. there we go so you can see over here that there's no piece sticking out. It's just a plug and there's the O-ring groove. And then this is so I can put a pretty strong spring in there. Okay, to overcome the force of the friction of that O-ring, I might need five pounds or even 10 pounds of force. Well, if I have 90 pounds per square inch, to push against that force to push this down, 
then uh, then I'll be able to balance that on this whole back side here. Okay, so I don't need the, the little handle. It's now just a simple plug, but this is there to be able to have a spring push it back up when I release the air pressure. All right, so that's how that's where that's where that comes from. And a pretty simple part. It's just a plug. Um, I've also called that this will be three three some type of stainless steel. Everything else will be some sort of brass or bronze, including this part. I've decided to make this part out of brass or bronze too. Uh, this will be 3D printed. Okay, so I think I've gone over all the results. This gives me room to clamp. This is direct. This is direct. Purchase part, purchase part, purchase part, purchase part, purchase part, purchase part. Fabricated part. Fabricated part. Fabricated part. This will be done on a mill. This will be done on a lathe. This will be done on a 3D printer. Okay, so those are those are the results. This is the design that we're going to work with. Um, and so now uh, you've got the base design files for those three parts that you have to make. And um, what is this one? Here are PDFs of what you're going to look like, but I've put them onto a Jamboard for you. So you're going to need to create this drawing. Okay, I've given you a base design drawing. I've modified it a little bit because I decided that instead of having this centered in the middle, that I would have a number that I could control from the edge. So you're going to need to create this drawing, which will have a top view, a front section view, and a sectioned ISO view. And I did these ones in Inventor, but if you do them in AutoCAD, it's all kind of the same thing. They all work kind of the same. You can use any drawing system you want, but I need to see certain things. So I need to see these dimensions. Now, the, the dimension style is critical. It's important, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay, but be sure if this says 3.00, yours says 3.00. If this tap call out looks a certain way, you want yours to look just like that, including this funny little symbol here, which is in AutoCAD too, by the way. So it's not a problem and you'll need to know the diameter symbol. Um, I show the section markers here so that you know where the section is taken, but I do not show the section label down here because it is an orthographic projection of the section. Okay, and the ANSI standard, why, why um, I know I'm blanking on it. Um, <laughs> I'll go look that one up. I, it's all, I'm always quoting that one. Uh, but the ANSI standard says that if you project a section view, you do not need a label. And this one doesn't need a label because it's just a visual. I don't need to do anything with it. Okay? So, so you're going to want to look this as much as you can. Now, here's one thing. is This is really pointing at the wrong spot because that's where three different chamfers come together. It would be better to point it at this chamfer. It would be better, okay? Because that's really what's happening. You're chamfering all these edges at, at point one two, at one eighth, okay? So let's take a look at this block. From this side, you can see now, here's some, here's some things you should need to know. One is you always call out holes, dimensions, everything to what they call visible lines or geometry lines. I can't call it, I can't call out the tap over here. That's a hidden line. I can't do it. Okay, that's why I took the section. Now I could have put other views in. I could have put the side view and the side view and shown it directly also. But I think this interior look is important because what did I do? This says that I drilled down through here with a 3 8 drill and I drilled through here with a 3 8 drill, and then I did my, my 0.69 by 0.89 deep here, 
and my 0 0.42 by 0 0.67 deep here. So that tells me I need one, two, three, four, five drill operations and one, two, three tapping operations. And I can tell that from this drawing right here. So that's that's kind of important for you to be able to um, to be able to see. Let me zoom in on this a little bit more so you can see it better. Okay. And you don't have to worry about how all this gets made. Though that's just the result of the drilling operations that I've done. Now, I do want to see center lines. They should extend about one eighth past the part. Um, I need to see these little break lines right here so that it doesn't come up. If you if you click the dimension to like the center line, that line will go all the way across. You need to see a little bit of a break between the object and your dimension lines. So be working on that. This one could have been done better. See how this one has a nice break up here and this one does not. So this one uh, really needs to be helped out a little bit. It needs to look like that. Okay, um, let's see. Here's a thing, this I, I1 means that I'm going to inspect this. A square box for us means that there's going to be an inspection dimension. So if I come down here, the note in I1 for inspection says inspect 100% of the parts at the work cell. Okay, so so that's that's an important important item that um, that we need to go through there. Hold on a sec here. Um, there we go. Sorry, I was just checking a, a message that came through, and I can ignore it. So I don't have any I two and I threes, but often you'll see this where there's an inspection criteria on this drawing. Now, sometimes they're on a different drawing, but we're going to include them on this drawing. So wherever I need to do this, 100% of the parts at the work cell or the work center or the machine. This means that the machinist is going to do it and going to be re responsible for it, uh, but, there's, but they're going to have to do some side of type of documentation for it that we'll look at later. So that's what that means. Okay, this little symbol okay, means diameter 3 eighths by 1.25 deep. So I'm going to do that diameter 3 eighths by 1.25 deep. Okay, and, and that gives me this, kind of like the pilot hole. And then this little one right here. It really should say it. It should say 3 8 diameter through. I might even put that on here. 3 8 diameter through. Okay, but that's what this means. To a depth of, to a depth of 1.25. That's the diameter sim symbol. And then you're already familiar with this. Now, we know that this is a 1 half NPT male because it's on the inside. Okay, some places include the M, some do not. Okay, and this says that the depth of the thread is 0.82. So I'm going to thread it for 0.82 deep. And that's just, it's just standard call out. That's what it looks like. Okay, all of those look kind of the same. Uh, is there anything else I need to show on this one? No, you'll notice that all of the centerline dimensions are called out to a real thing that you can see. This centerline mark is important. So it says that the center of this hole is up 0.88, and it's centered on this, which we can see is 0.75 back. Okay, so now, Let's take a look at some of these tables. There's an inspection table, and I'm going to expect that you put that on each of the machining drawings. Once you've got one made, you can copy and paste it to the others. There's also generally a notes table. 
note one, two, three, four. Sometimes they're called out specifically up here, but this is deburr. That means that when you machine something, there's usually little sharp edges, and to get rid of the sharp edges is called deburr. And there's lots of ways to do that, and you're not telling the machinist how. You're just telling them that when you pick this thing up, you don't want to get cut. Okay, so that's deburr, all sharp edges. And then um, this particular one, since it's going to come out kind of messy and um, oily and dirty from the machining operations, you're saying clean it with a hot water wash. Now, some things can take a hot water wash, and when you look at the material, you'll see this can take a hot water wash. And so that's a good thing to do. So here's another table, and it's just a general table that you create and you put into these each time. Here's another one, standard tolerances. Okay, so when you put a dimension on, the ANSI standards say that you have to have to clearly identify unambiguously what is accepted. What can the machinist make and still have it be accepted? How much can you tolerate? That's tolerance. How much can you tolerate? Because getting it at exactly 1.75 might be a little bit different, difficult. You might get 1.753 or 1.75001, or 1.8. And you need to know, or you need to tell the machinist which one of those is acceptable. Now, normally your shop will have a standard, okay? And you can imagine this outside dimension doesn't really matter. So you wouldn't really care too much because the claw that's going to grab it is adjustable. So you won't need to worry about this one. And so for this company and for us, the loosest dimension that we're going to accept is either fractional, I could have made those fractional, plus or minus a 16th of an inch, okay? Um, and, um, but since this is two decimal places, plus or minus 0 0.03, which is about a 32nd of an inch, right? So we're saying what we want to accept. And you can imagine, it's, it's almost who cares. It's just a block. You're going to grab onto it. It doesn't hook onto anything. The water doesn't care. So this can be what they call a loose tolerance, okay? So this is much easier just to do this and worry about it with how we write the dimension than to write plus or minus 0 0.03, 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 plus or minus 0 0.03. It gets pretty pretty tiresome. Plus or minus 0 0.03, plus or minus 0 0.03, plus or minus 0 0.03, plus or minus 0.03, plus or minus 0 0.03, plus or minus. It would be really, really hard and it goops up your drawing. So this is standard, that you're going to have something called standard tolerances. And depending on how you write your dimension, these are called dim styles. You'll apply this when you inspect the part after it has been made. So those are three standard blocks, inspection, notes, and tolerance. Now the title block that I use is the standard ANSI A, okay, rather than the large. Things just seem to fit better. And look, I could have gotten this to fit a little bit better here too. See that that's not really quite off on there. And we're going to use B size drawings. And these will all be revision A. In the company block, I want you to write ARC DESGN 330. And all of your titles are going to be machining detail. And then the drawing number is for what is this? It's the block housing. And this is a half by half by one quarter NPT. But this is a good enough description of it.
Okay, so, and you're going to need to have your name in here. Okay, so I think you can all figure out how to do this, and I've got, uh, I've got a video on how to do that. Your revision history is important. We all, we're always going to start with A. This should say new release. Should say new release. We're not going to worry about approvals or zone. Zone would be if I make a change to this one right here. Okay. That's in zone one, two, A. Okay, I'd come down that zone two. Well, it's actually kind of in zone three. Okay, here's my marker. So it's actually in zone three. There's the marker. A. And I would say, okay, for this particular revision, go look in zone three A, and you'd find it, and there would be a mark that identified it. But, the, but a new release applies to the whole drawing. So we don't have to put anything here at all. Last block is your parts list. Okay, to make this thing, you have to know what material to go get. Okay, and this says that we're going to buy something called brass rectangular bar, and we're going to buy it in a two by three, two inch by three inch bar. Okay, so. It's going to look like this, and then I can cut it 1.75 long to get, to get my basic part before I start machining it and milling it. So this tells me, what am I going to make this out of? So this thing, this block that you see here, is made from some sort of stuff, and, and I'm calling it brass rectangular bar. I found online that I can get two by three, and so and I can get it in 12 inches long, 24 up to 12 feet long. And so you can imagine if I get a 12 inch bar of it, I can get six of these out of it, okay? And have a tiny little bit left over. So that's what we're going to do on each one of these. I want you to recreate the drawing. Right? Your first job is to take a base drawing and input these dimensions to it so that you have the part. And then from that part, you will create the drawing. Okay. So there's one, here's another one, here's the piston, and you can see it's got almost all the same stuff, but I do have, they, a lot of this one is three decimal places, three decimal places, three decimal places. These ones I don't care about too much, so they're two decimal places. But these ones are even more important for some reason. And if you remember the, the O-ring in the piston, the 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 rod was very well closely controlled much closer than plus or minus ten thousandths of an inch they were controlled to plus zero minus two thousandths of an inch so i've got a video for you that shows you how to do that that's called a deviation tolerance and you can apply that to the outside dimension and the seat ring dimension Okay, and then the 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 hole where the um the hole where the um uh spring is gonna go is listed as point four four four. Okay, and, and that's not gonna be an easy hole to make like that. I should probably really say drill point okay, but you'll get um you'll get um able to uh, uh, figure that out as we go. Okay, so I'm going to turn something off here so I don't keep seeing it. All right, so there we go. So that's, that's, that's this drawing, and you'll see. Inspection, notes, and I've got a little bit different note down here on this one. Chamfer lead-in, 
but it's the same block and you edit it. Here's the same block again. Now this one is missing the revision block. You're gonna need to put the revision block on it. Okay, you'll also notice that each one of these has a true view, a section view, and a section ISO. I'm doing that so that you get practice. I do want to show one more thing here. Okay, this one I've used stainless steel rod, type 304. So these are things that you might go look at. And, and I'm saying that you can buy this rod in a length that's 12 inches long. So again, I'll get a bunch of these out of it. I'll get 11 of them out of it. Why not 12, you say? Well, when I cut this, I'm going to lose just a tiny bit of material, maybe a 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch from my saw blade or my cutter on my lathe. And so I always lose just a little bit and so I can't get a full 12 of these out of it unless I play around with this number. And that's something that your manufacturing engineer might come back and ask you to do. Might come back and ask you, well, could you please make that 0.96 or 0.97 or something like that so that I can actually cut it and save and get 12 parts. Okay, so that would be like almost a 10% savings on your material cost. This is what manufacturing engineers do. They look at stuff like this and like this, and they, and they try to work it out with the designer. Okay, and you would go, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> There's no real reason for that to be one inch long. I just kind of made it up. Whoop, where did that come from? I just made it up. Okay, it looks good. Now, I didn't just make it up, so you know. It's good to have a part that's about one and a half or two times the diameter when you have something running inside of a tube so that it doesn't kind of cock sideways and get jammed. Okay, so this length isn't totally arbitrary, but I could certainly cut it down a little bit. And these are just part of those design considerations that you would work through. Okay. So there's, there's that one. Let me go back to, uh, to here. I think that covers this sheet for you and about some of the things. Remember, we are inspecting. And look, I'm inspecting the two things that are really important. Three things. They're pretty darn important. Everything else, I'm I'm just saying, yeah, go ahead, go ahead and make it. Um, I've got some close tolerances, and you're going to have to learn how to put those on. And other than that, this is just good practice, just good practice for making a drawing. And, and I would expect, I gave you a base design for this, so I'd expect maybe ten or fifteen minutes to make the part at the most. And maybe since I've given you most of this, um, an hour to make the first one because you have to make these tables. Okay. And then maybe 20 minutes to make this drawing. And if it takes you more than that, that's okay. It's just good practice. Now this one's got a little bit more stuff on it. You can see I added a view up here because I really, really like to put diameters to, to a, a place where I can see it. First, and, and I could see it here, I could put it here, and I could put this as a diameter. Okay, but I, I, this is, this is a, a more standard practice. Okay, so now I've got a basic view, I've got a section view, I've got this view, and I added a top view. Everything else stays kind of the same. Okay. This one, this is filled out better. A, new release. Da, da, dum. This is the filter inlet. Um, this is incorrect. I've changed it in the, um, this should say PLA. What are you making it out of? What are you making this thing out of? PLA. Okay. 
there's a few things to tell you about this. Okay. Now, this should have a center mark on it. So please put a center mark on it. When you place these, you want them sort of lined up. And it's best if you can get them lined up with this. So this should move over a little bit. This should move out a little bit. You want things lined up to be a good drawing. You also want these placed. If I were to, to take a line here, you want them, if this is about 15 degrees and this is 15 degrees, you want to place things in kind of that area. If they're too close out here, it's hard to see the difference between your center lines and your leader lines. So always try to get your, your leaders away from your center lines. Try to get at least 15 degrees and 15 degrees. Get them lined up nicely, lined up nicely. Okay? This is something worth talking about. I have a specific dimension, a specific dimension, and a specific dimension. Okay, and then this is actually a specific dimension because it's called out as a spherical diameter. So I know the radius. I've specified it already. So this has been specified. I have already specified the total height. And not only that, by adding up the tolerances, okay, I've told what the total tolerance can be on that. So this overall dimension is really not needed. But it's kind of useful for somebody to see so they don't have to add things up. So when you have a not needed dimension that's nice to see, it's called a reference dimension, you put it in parentheses so that people know that it's just there and I don't have to pay it. I don't look at the decimal places and the tolerances and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm looking really just at, at, oh, I got it. That's a little over two inches. Got it. Right? So that's called a reference dimension. Okay? In, in ANSI standards, we're not allowed to double dimension. Have two fully specified dimensions. It's not allowed. Okay, so here's tip. That means typical, which means that these holes are the same pattern in each direction. Now, this really should have a center line. I'd like you to add a center line to it. This should have a center mark. Um, this one shows the center line, though, which is okay. And it says that this is 0.37 off the center line. And typical means that all of these holes and all of these holes are 0.37 off the center line. It's 0.13 through. That's about 1 8 in both directions. Both directions. And it's set upward 0.19. So that's a very typical way of showing these. Okay, this is a dimension that's just on there. This is a wall thickness, and it indicates that all along here, I've got a wall thickness, actually all along here, got a wall thickness of 0.18. And then here's all this stuff that you're seeing here. This is a one-half MPT, and I'm just saying drill through. Now this, I'd really like to have a little bit more, I'd like you to use that same format that we used on the other one. That would be a good thing to do. Here's our inspection. So it's all kind of coming over and over and over again. Inspections, notes, standard tolerances, title block, rev block, parts. And this should say PLA. That should say PLA, okay? 
So those are the three drawings that I'm going to expect you to get done this week. Well, there's a few more. You have I'm going to show you on Thursday a tabulated drawing. So you'll actually have four drawings to do um, for the tabulated drawing will be the last one. Okay, so so that's hopefully that's it. I don't have any questions popping up online. So there's your design review results. Thank you very much for doing the good work on the design review. Here's machining details that you can ask questions about. Here is the base design IPT, the um, housing IPT, and the piston IPT. Those are your three base designs that you need. You really don't need the check assembly yet. Okay, and you don't need the nipple yet, but I'll put that in there shortly because you'll need it. Um, you'll need it um, later on. Okay, and here are the actual things that you'll be that you'll be drawing. And here, here's the here's the assembly that we'll be working with. Okay, so let's see what else we've got. That's PDFs of the new designs, the base design files. We just went over the tables you need. Here's a video on how to make the tables. I don't think I need to go over that. Uh, hopefully you know how to do it. And this is an inventor, but it's the same thing in AutoCAD. You could do this easily in AutoCAD. It works exactly the same way. Um, and a couple of the... Uh, just notes like I just went over. Okay, so this is about the tables, how to make the tables, and how to make each of the drawings. So the next one is I'm going to show you the milling machine again. So let's say that I take these two dimensions. Let's say that's assigned to me, 3.873, 3.621. So I need to open up the milling machine, and you need to do this, and we're going to get more complex every week. So you should be able to start thinking about how do you do this well. So I just said I needed 3.873 and 3.621. And if I do my measurement now, it's 3.937. So in the x direction, I have to cut off some amount. So I'm going to calculate that. 3.937 minus 3.873. Oh, 064. That's not cutting off a lot. So I might want to use a small 5 millimeter cutter. What's 5 millimeters? 5 divided by 25.4 is, see, that's still, you know, 0.19. So the radius of that divided by 2 is 0.098. So even this, you know, I can't even make a half cut. But let me come down, and I'm going to cut just a bare, tiny little bit off. I'm going to get it going really slow here. And so that's going to, that may or may not cut anything off. Let me just go in oop, just a little bit more. So that's going to cut just a little bit off. So if I run my cutter now as fast as I can go up to the top, that's what's called a squaring cut. So I'm going to make a squaring cut. So there we go. Squaring cut. And it takes a moment.
this is where having some good music running would be helpful. If you're doing by this by hand, of course, your hands are busy and you're cranking a handle to do this, which is how I learned how to do it. I had to do these on a manual, I called it a Bridgeport mill. Okay, so I've just made, I've made a, a squaring cut or a skim cut. So let me measure it. Well, it looks like I didn't take any off. Looks like I'm going to have to go over just a hair more. So let me zero myself now. And I'm going to go over. I can't go over too much, right? If I go over too much, 0.937. Minus 0.873. I, I can't go over much. I'm just going to go over just a little bit more. But I'm going over less than 0 0.06. So I'll go over that much. And I'm going to run my cut again. This Okay, now I can see I'm getting a cut. Okay, so my first cut didn't, but when you have just barely anything to take off, sometimes, sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out. So I always do skim cut. Now I'm doing another skim cut. And um, look, skim cuts, when I travel 1.5 millimeters per second, I'm doing a fairly rough cut. And there's all sorts of interesting stuff about mills, whether the speed you're running, and it's actually the tool tip speed that counts. Uh, so a bigger diameter has to run a little bit slower because the, the tip of the tool, the edge, is going faster on one revolution. But you don't have to worry about that on this version of the milling machine. But depending on which way your rotation is going, and which direction you're cutting and what speed you're going, you'll get a fine finish or kind of a crummy finish. So there we go. I made a cut. Now I'll measure 3.913. All right, so I'm going to bring up my calculator again. 3.913. But I need to click on it. 0 0.91. I guess I have to clear it. 0.913 minus 0 .873, 0 .04. So if I zero myself, Z, oops, I got to get back over to here, Z, and I move in the X, 0.04, I'm going to be close. Now, machine cutters, this doesn't do perfect, but because machine cutters have little bits of wobble and I might not be perfectly square and all sorts of other stuff, but let me move over. And I'm going to go really slow. 0.04. I think that was the number that I needed. So I'm kind of moving up to it slowly, but surely. 0.0. I, I, I'm going to call that pretty close. I'd always like to leave a little bit if I can so now I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna make my cut so it's takes a little while to get a cut just right and you can get better and better and better at it by learning you know different size cutters and taking rough cuts and simple cuts and then taking even smaller cuts okay as we get better at this, the deeper you cut, the more it actually pushes the tool out of the way. And the longer you cut, it actually gets dull and gets a little bit smaller. And when you have chatter, it's hard to measure. So there's lots and lots and lots of aspects of milling that we're not touching here, but that's okay. SOS, start out simple. I just want to get fairly close here. And I'm almost done. And it 
There we go. I've got my cut done. So if I measure again, 3.8755. That is pretty close. 3.8755 minus 3, 3.873. I'm two and a half thousandths off. Okay, now this is why you need to have those tolerances. If I'm using from our standard tolerances to uh, three decimal places, I could go plus 10 thousandths. I could be 10 thousandths bigger or 10 thousandths smaller. Am I within 0 0.010? Yes, I just made a good part in the X direction. And now I'm ready to start my Y direction. So that's a quick little demo on how to make this. Now, notice we have the ability to rotate the part now. So we can make much more complex parts. We can put chamfers on the corners and we can make a triangle and we can do all sorts of uh, more interesting um, parts. But this week, I just want you to make a block that is intolerance. Okay, so your required machine part and your last measured part have to agree within, since we're at three decimal places, plus or minus 0.010. Okay, so there we go. That's, that's your lecture for today. Tomorrow we'll do lab. Thursday I'll show you about the... Um, about the tabulated drawings and some of the some of the minor calculations that I'd like you to make. There we go.